<laughs> we are with Razor Pop once again, yeah. and today we go to the movies. Every Wednesday, Razor Pop goes to the movies, and today we've got Sing to the Dawn. Yes, I went to the press conference, and it was very exciting. And we also have the movie reviews of the week. Now, Christina, what do you tell us about Sing to the Dawn? Um, it's actually um, it's an animation film that is um, made in Singapore, and the production cost of this animation film is very low budget. It's, it only costs you as Maybe I shouldn't say only, but it costs US five million dollars, which is considered very low budget. Uh, yeah, five million for a for an animation. Yes, however, for a Singapore film, uh, five million do US it's dollars is amount. it's it's big. I I don't know. I think that there's, there's probably like one film that 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 costs uh, more than two or three million dollars, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, generally films in Singapore cost about a million or so. But mm. anyway, yeah. So this Sing to the Dawn is actually a 1975 story that is written by Ho Min Fong. It was based on her story, a mm. short story, and it was adapted into a musical by um, Singaporean. Um, it was ad ad adopted, adapted <laughs> into a musical by um, Singaporean composer Dick Lee. Yes, it's based on rural Thailand about a young girl named Dawan who fought for dreams to win a scholarship and study in the city. It was then. Um, we staged into musicals in 2003 and 2004 too. Other band then being made into a musical by Dick Lee in 1996. So it was like, we staged three times into a musical. I saw the musical, by the way. How, how, yeah, how did you like I it? I thought it was okay. Yeah. I thought it was okay. Um, some of the songs were quite memorable. I think, who acted in it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I heard some I think of the Selena songs. Selena Tan was one of them. Selena Tan? I think she played the mother, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but yeah, I saw it. It was at Kalang Theatre many years ago. So, but yeah, I really enjoyed the songs too. Mm, it, it's very inspiring. And um, I thought Celine Rosa Tan, who was the one who voiced that one who sang the songs, which I, I think, which, is, which was what you heard. Mm. Yeah, it was very, very inspiring. And um, yeah. Okay. Mm. So... Uh, shall we watch the VT? Definitely. Let's look at a video about Sing to the Dawn. Hello, I'm Christina and today I'm at a press conference of Singapore's first animation film, Sing to the Dawn. And very soon I'm going to meet the film director. I'm going to meet a voice of a talent who played extremely well in this particular animation film. So come with me and find out for yourself what's in this movie. You, you play the villain who has an uh, unhealthy obsession with Elvis. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Jason Chan with me from Sing to the Dawn. And uh, what do you think of the character that you are playing? Can you tell us a little bit about the character? Uh, my character is uh, called Parrot. He loves Elvis. He looks a bit like Elvis. I think he's uh, basically filled himself out to be more than <laughs> what Elvis was like in his lifetime. And uh, he wears a wig that looks like an Elvis wig. He loves Vegas. Um, gambling, he wants to own an entire Vegas Strip uh, and he wants to build it in the middle of a beautiful forest and so obviously he's the villain of the story and uh, he's not very well liked. He also becomes a bit of a fool so my character is a lot of fun to play. Um, he is delusional uh, but at the same time, I, I, I think very human. You know, villains are always human, and villains are always uh, fun to play for that reason, I think. Well, he loves Elvis, but it doesn't mean he's good at imitating Elvis, <laughs> which was a great excuse for me to not be particularly good at imitating him either. Um, so I basically tried to get an essence of Elvis, and I think that's always mostly what people do when they imitate someone famous. Just try to get an essence of it. Um, the essence would be more, you know, some of the voice, his smoothness. But a lot of it, I think, for this character was more looking at how he tries to be like Elvis. I mean, he's he's not Elvis. He's, he just wants to be Elvis. And I think that um, that makes it even more tragic. Miss Dawn is your, your typical kampong girl. So, Celine, can you tell me what do you think of the character that you're playing in this film? Uh, I think she's a very, she has a very strong personality. She reminds me of, uh, how shall we say, a, a modern day woman being shrunk down to a 16 year old. Uh, I, I feel, however, she, she represents more of the past, where, because, you know, these days, or, or maybe not so much the past, but definitely not Singapore, um, where a girl is actually being repressed. And oddly enough, um, 
if you don't think about it being in the kampong area, about how your dreams have always been taken away from you, of how you have dreams but you never want or, or never get to fulfill it because people tell you it's not possible, um, y- you're a woman. <laughs> We don't have enough money. I know, right? So um, I think Dawn represents all of these women. Or oh, it could it may not necessarily be a girl, but maybe even a guy. Who people have told you, you you're never able to do all this because you're a woman, or in a case of minority. Um, I feel that Dawn speaks very strongly as someone who tells you to not listen to all this, to truly believe in yourself and do what you feel. Your best at or what you can do. Sing to the dawn, right? Dawan is actually very courageous in pursuing her dreams. I know that Celine actually was from accountancy. You started out in accountancy before you yeah. went to theatre and acting yeah. and yeah. singing. So Celine must be very courageous in pursuing your dreams as well. Oh, can you tell me a little bit about oh. that process, about fighting for your dreams and getting out of accountancy? Oh, gosh, I, I have to tell you, living in Singapore, you tend to. Um, you t- your dreams do tend to be suppressed or repressed or oppressed, all the press, oh <laughs> literally pressed, <laughs> because you're, you're told that um, you have to earn money. It's all about earning money. And I grew up uh, in a family with which um, my parents constantly told me that stability was an important part of life. But that is because they came from a generation with which money was very scarce. I went into accountancy because I thought, Stability was the best option to go. I was in it for <laughs> about a year and a half. Um, and ev- even way before that, I always knew I like to sing and I like to act and dance. And I always thought I would, oh, fine, I'll, I'll take accountancy and I'll do it as a side job. But after doing accountancy for about a year and a half, I was offered an uh, audition in a, a really big theatre production. And... Um, I, uh, I was also offered um, uh, quite a lucrative uh, financial job oh, during that period. <laughs> Dilemma. I'm telling you, it. I I remember it was a Wednesday at 9 a.m. <laughs> Gosh, I literally was stabbing myself everywhere because I know I I had sort of already accepted a financial job, and I was supposed to start the following week. And the first thing that raced through my brain was, my mom is going to kill me. She was going to kill me. <sighs> if I ever had a day in my life that I described there was going to be, you know, the worst day of my entire life, it would be that day that I had to tell my mom that I couldn't take the financial job. I, I wanted to go down that route. It didn't, it didn't start well. It didn't. It was two weeks of her being very angry with me. So, yes, I would describe that as being... The most courageous day of my entire life. It's really very hard. And unless you can really follow through with it, you you have to really, really believe in it. You can't even like double, double. You can't. You you have to know you really want to go through with it and know that no matter what, you can't give up. And I feel this is seriously what's lacking in a lot of youth these days. I feel so... um, I hope that one becomes a role model for a lot of younger children um, because obviously we are a nation which is still in infancy and we don't even come close um, in terms of very good art um, as compared to overseas. So it goes slightly higher, so kind of something like that one, but that one, people bends, you know, you play that with voice and kind of suppose. What quality are you hoping to inject into this character that you're playing? Well, I think one of the key things that was told by Phil, the director, was that Kai is very fun-loving. He is your typical boy next door. He loves having fun. And I think, you know, um, as a counterbalance to Dawan, because Dawan is a very mature, very strong character. So I think Phil wanted a uh, you know, more um, fun, lighter character to balance that off between the, the siblings as well. Yeah. How is it like actually voicing for an animation character as opposed to like working on stage and hosting live shows? One of the key things, of course, is that because you don't see a lot of facial features, you know, so you really have to make sure that your voice is able to carry out all the emotions that's needed and all the uh, feelings that the character needs. So that's a challenge, but as well, that's also the fun bit. Like I think a lot of us, we've mentioned before, um, a lot of us in this cast, we're all theatre actors. So we enjoy the um, freedom to just play 
I think that's very important um, to just play around and muck around during recording and see where the director wants us to go with the particular character. A little video. I think the hardest part for me was ensuring that what I was trying to do was uh, authentic for Southeast Asia. And here I have the director of Sing to Don't With Us, Phil Mitchell. And uh, can you tell us what is so Southeast Asian and Singaporean about this film, Sing to the Dawn? Uh, well, the story set in Southeast Asia, the voice talent are all from Singapore, the movie was developed and made locally, so everything going into it is Singaporean, is Southeast Asian, so what comes out has to have that, that feeling. Now, Sing to the Dawn is an uh, adaptation from the novel by Ho Min Fong. So how much of um, the original story do you keep from Min Fong? Uh, it, we kept the core threads of Dawan's uh, desire to better herself and not follow a true, just a tr the same traditional path that was laid down for girls, always had been, always would be if everybody stuck to the way in which things were. She's a bit of a rebel, and that was uh, uh, a, the main driving thread of the entire story. Uh, that and her having a belief in herself and realizing she had the strength inside to uh, realize the goals that she set herself. So basically this uh, movie is about the dream of this girl called Dawan and she fights very courageously for her dreams. Just like the girl who voiced her, which is Celine Rosatan, she fought for her dreams too. How was the music? Mm. The music was fantastic, and um, a lot of um, the cast says that they love the song, which is called Dreams, mm -hmm. because it makes them believe more in the production that they are in, which is um, Sing to the Dawn. Wow, that's mm. wonderful. Mm. Um, I, I think the, the version that I saw on Kaling Theatre was with... Um, I can't remember the lead actress, but I think uh, Caleb Go was play playing uh, Kai. Kai, mm -hmm. and then Selena Tan played the mother, if I'm not mistaken. Not heard of Caleb Go for some time. Yeah, yeah, yeah I don't he's know not been he there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, we are going to show you the reviews of the new films this week. Let's see. The funniest comedy of the week is Tropic Thunder. Written and directed by and starring comedian Ben Stiller, Tropic Thunder is about a director trying to shoot a big-budget Vietnam War movie. To speed up the shoot, he drops his actors in a real jungle, but they end up fighting a dangerous band of drug smugglers instead. Tropic Thunder is very funny, with strong comic performances by Robert Downey Jr. as a method actor playing a black man, and Tom Cruise in a fat suit playing a ruthless Hollywood executive. Don't be late for the movie because the best jokes are actually at the start. What do you mean, you people? What do you mean, you people? For smarter moviegoers, we recommend Blindness. Based on a novel by the Nobel Prize winner for literature, Jose Saramago, it tells a dark story of a plague of blindness spreading throughout the world. A group of patients find themselves quarantined in an abandoned hospital, but when the supplies run out, the patients turn against each other. Directed by Fernando Morelis, who did The Constant Gardener and City of God, Blindness is a good film that examines the dark depths of the human heart. Some of its scenes are very memorable, while the cast, led by Julianne Moore, is golden. Directed by Fernando Morelis, who did The Constant Gardener and City of God, Blindness is a good film that examines the dark depths of the human heart. Some of its scenes are very memorable, while the cast, led by Julianne Moore, is golden. The movie is rather gloomy though, so don't watch it if you're suicidal. Is there any government or, or order? Chaos. Help me! Help me stop that! We're obviously all alone here. Who do you think you are giving all these orders? I hereby appoint myself the King of War Three. 
Documentary maker Morgan Spurlock became famous in 2004 with Super Size Me, about the health hazards of eating McDonald's meals. He's back in Where in the World is Osama Bin Laden? It sees him visiting Egypt, Morocco, Israel, Saudi Arabia, and Pakistan to have a better picture of Islam. He finds out, somewhat unsurprisingly, that America's war in Iraq has only caused terrorism to flourish, and that majority of Muslims live perfectly ordinary lives. There's nothing new here, of course, but Morgan does make his documentary charmingly casual and entertaining. We don't know whether he's in a cave with the door shut. I was wondering if we could ask you a question. No, no, no. Our cave with the door open. I got a tip on where to find his uncle, Mafuz Azam. You wouldn't turn him in for the twenty-five million dollars. But I'm a wanderlust. Lovers of art house films won't go wrong with Tokyo. It's an extraordinary collection of short films by three of the best auteurs in the world. Michelle Gondry, who did Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, Leo Carax, who did Polar X, and Bong Joon Ho, who did The Host, coming together to pay homage to a city that is as strange and stunning as only Tokyo can be. Tokyo is weird, whimsical, and sometimes wonderful. This film is strictly for cinephiles looking for a one-of-a-kind film that isn't bound by formula. The lovely Jeon Ji Hoon from My Sassy Girl plays a TV producer who is bored with her job. One day, she is rescued from a robbery attempt. Her rescuer is a man who thinks he is Superman. Struck by his bizarre personality, she decides to make him the subject of a TV show, and he quickly becomes famous through witnessing his determination to save people at all costs. She also realizes the value of being human. Directed by Jung Yoon Chul, If I Was Superman is ultimately too melodramatic, predictable, and drawn out to hold your attention. Wow, this is more like an X-Files. This is not a documentary. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm going to kill you. Superman. I'm not going to kill you. Why are people like this? Nice. Yeah, uh, I strongly recommend Tokyo for people who are into art films. Uh, it was, uh, like I said, it's, it has three directors: Michelle Gondry, Leo Kara, and um, Bong Joon Ho, who directed the host. And it was, um, it's a very challenging film. The, the the three directors came together and they made three short films, and each one of them are extremely unusual. It's not like anything I've seen before. They're quite whimsical, quite. Uh, wonderful, quite different and unique, and uh, you might come out of the cinema cursing like crazy, like because thinking, "What the hell so was that?" Because they put three different stories together, or I no, is there one common thread to this three different no, stories? No, there are no common thread. There are mm. three different stories together, uh, and each one of them uh, tackle a different aspect of Japanese culture, or Japanese life. And uh, yeah, and it's very interesting because Michel Gondry is from um, he's French, but he's based in the U.S. Uh, Bong Joon Ho is Korean, and Leo Kara is uh, French also. So you know, and, it and I think the French the Japanese culture. Yes, and I think the French always make good films. <laughs> so yeah, um, really enjoyed that one. I wanted to watch Blinders actually. Yes, that mm. was good. I thought too. it was an interesting um, storyline. Very gloomy though, very gloomy uh, because uh, it, uh, Fernando Morales can make very you know he he he's a very good director and and he follows his vision through and through and uh, in this case because the the material is already so grim it's about it's about how uh it's about the evil in men the innate dark nature of men and how you know when uh society falls to its knees or when uh uh, when there are no laws and rules and regulations about how to behave, we can all turn into animals and pretty much kill each other. So, you know, like, like Lord of the Flies, you know? <laughs> so, all the darkness all came out. Yeah. Okay. So, thank you for staying with us on Razor Pop today. All right. Next bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>